Good evening, viewers. Welcome to the KDA Friday Bulletin. I am Sergeant Kasim Ali. The Bulletin is a show to keep you updated on events undertaken by the Ministry of Defence over the week. In our highlights tonight, Commander-in-Chief presides over Episcopal installation of Bishop. Home of Sappers host Kenya Defence Forces Day celebrations. Defence Ministry Performance Contract Ratified. Defence Forces Memorial Hospital holds Cancer Awareness and Prevention Month. To start us off, this week, the Kenya Defence Forces witnessed a significant spiritual milestone at the Ulenzi Sports Complex in Langata with the Episcopal installation of Right Reverend Wallace Nganga as the Bishop of the Military Ordinariate of Kenya. The event was graced by the President of the Republic of Kenya and the Commander-in-Chief of the Defence Forces, His Excellency Dr. William Ruto. The occasion symbolised a deep partnership between spiritual and military leadership, highlighting the role of church in providing pastoral care and spiritual guidance to Kenya Defence Forces personnel, their families and dependents. Leading the rites was His Excellency Habertas Van Megan, Apostolic Nuncio to Kenya and South Sudan. In his address, Van Megan emphasized the crucial responsibilities awaiting Bishop Nganga in fostering peace, security and justice through spiritual leadership. In his acceptance speech, Bishop Nganga expressed his gratitude to the Holy Father and laid out his vision for the role, focusing on unity, compassion and ethical leadership within the military. Today marks not just my inspiration, but a renewal of our shared commitment to the mission of Christ. I offer my deepest thanks to the Holy Father of Francis for the trust he has placed in me. The military of Nairobi's where faith is planted and nurtured in the hearts of those who stand ready to defend our nation is a sacred responsibility. The Chief of Defense Forces, General Charles Kahariri, welcomed Bishop Nganga, affirming his role as both a spiritual shepherd and a key partner in promoting ethical leadership and moral guidance within the military. These bishops are, of course, had in their duties by the chaplaincy that ensures that members of the Kenya Defense Forces receive spiritual nourishment and guidance in order to be able to navigate the unique challenges that are encountered as we discharge our duties in the defense of this country, deployed within our borders, and beyond. While addressing the congregation, the Commander-in-Chief highlighted the enduring relationship between the Church and KDF, underscoring the role of faith in strengthening moral values. He emphasized the importance of spiritual leadership within the military, which offers guidance, support, and solace to service personnel and their families. We are here also gathered to affirm our confidence that under Bishop Nana, the military ordinary will continue to provide our soldiers with essential spiritual support. The Cabinet Secretary for Defence, Honorable Soi Pantuya, presided over the 13th Kenya Defence Forces Day celebrations at Thika Barracks. The event themed One Force Mission Ready, Unity in Action for National Security and Development is held annually to honour the men and women in uniform, those currently serving, retired and those who paid the ultimate price in defending our country. A key highlight was the launch of the Kenya Defence Forces book, Defenders of the Nation, which shares compelling stories of the Kenya Defence Forces. The day began with C.S. Tuya lying arid at the Heroes and Heroines Monument. 
She later toured various stands showcasing the diverse capabilities and specialization within the Kenya Defense Forces. Honorable Tuya emphasized the significance of KDF Day as a time to honor the extraordinary sacrifices made by Kenya's soldiers. She called on all Kenyans to appreciate the dedication and bravery of the country's service members and extended gratitude to the families of the Kenya Defense Forces personnel for their unwavering support. KDF Day is a time to reflect on the extraordinary sacrifices made by our dear soldiers, some of whom have paid the ultimate price to safeguard our peace and security. We extend our deepest gratitude to the families of our soldiers. Your sacrifices are as immense as those of the soldiers you love as you bear the weight of their duty every single day. She also commended the KDF's broader role as a source of hope for the nation, highlighting the military's contribution beyond safeguarding Kenya's borders to include humanitarian and peacekeeping missions that improve the lives of Kenyans. Chief of the Defense Forces, General Charles Kahariri, stressed that KDF Day is an important occasion for the military to honor the sacrifice of its personnel. He also thanked the government and Commander-in-Chief for their continued support in ensuring that the KDF remains well equipped and mission ready. The theme of this year's celebration, One Force, Mission Ready, Unity in Action for National Security and Development. It aptly captures the essence of our work, the unity that defines us, and the mission readiness that we strive for every day. During the ceremony, Officers and service personnel were recognized and awarded for their acts of valor demonstrated in conflict zones and also for acts that exemplifies excellence in service to Kenya. KDF Day was also celebrated at various service headquarters, brigades, formations and camps across Kenya and beyond. At defense headquarters in Nairobi, Brigadier Bernard Korir, commandant of the camp admin unit, emphasized the significance of the occasion and described it as a time to celebrate the selfless act of the gallant heroes and heroines who defend the nations every day. KDF Day, the main purpose is to celebrate our gallant heroes and heroines for their gallant deeds. Elsewhere, soldiers from Moy Air Base, led by Base Commander Brigadier Bernard Oluoch, visited Huruma Children's Home donating essential items such as sugar, cooking oil, soap, flour, rice, and diapers. In Eldoret, soldiers from 9 Kenya Rifles, based at Moy Barracks, under the leadership of Brigadier John Kipia, Commandant Defense Forces Recruits Training School, donated blood to support KDF medical facilities. At the coast, Kenya Navy Base Manda Bay and Operation Amani Boni Troops joined the rest of the Kenya Defense Forces by having a spirited football match between the Kenya Navy Base Manda Bay and Operation Amani Boni team, with the Navy team emerging victorious. These gestures demonstrated Kenya Defense Forces' commitment to both national defense and uplifting the lives of local communities. Still on the Kenya Defense Forces Day celebrations, in the lead-up to this year's KDF Day celebration, the military fraternity in various deployments came together to pay homage to the gallant Kenya Defence Forces service personnel. The Kenya Air Force led the charge with a 52-kilometre walk from Moy Air Base to 12 engineers the Kabaraks. The team, composed of 80 Kenya Air Force personnel, was flagged off by Brigadier Bernard Uloch, Base Commander Moy Air Base, and was led by Colonel Benedetta Kikech. In another event, Kenya Defence Forces personnel embarked on a 104-kilometre cycling expedition led by Brigadier Ahmed Saman, Commander Army Special Operations Brigade. The event started and ended at Thika Barracks, passing through Gatunyu, Kirwara, Ndakaini Dam, Ndunyuchege, Mukarara and Gitwamba. This marked the second edition of the cycling event, which saw a turnout of 36 participants. Take a look. 
Upon completing the work, the team was received by the Chief of Defence Forces, General Charles Kahariri, who loaded them for their dedication, emphasising the importance of such events in fostering unity and comradery within the KDF. Brigadier Saman dedicated the cycling expedition to the memory of KDF's fallen heroes, who have made the ultimate sacrifice in defending Kenya's territorial integrity. He noted that such events are a poignant reminder of the freedom and security the nation enjoys today thanks to the selflessness of its military personnel. In other lead-up events, soldiers deployed under Operation Maliza Uwalifu donated assorted foodstuff to the residents of Loibongare community in Samburu County. Across the region, KDF troops deployed under MONUSCO in the Democratic Republic of Congo also marked KDF Day, celebrating their contributions to peace and security on the global stage. The event held at Mavivi Camp in Beni was marked by song and dance in tribute to the fallen heroes and in celebration of all KDF service personnel who continue to give their best in pursuit of peace across the globe. We shall take a short break. We will be back in a moment. The Defense Saving and Credit Cooperative Society, the SACO, is a premium financial institution dedicated to serving the unique needs of both serving and retired military personnel. The cooperative aims at enhancing the overall financial well-being of their members by providing affordable and accessible savings and credit facilities, competitive interest rates and flexible terms. The products include savings accounts which are interest earning, a variety of loan products including personal loans, educational loans, development loans and emergency loans. The SACO also offers insurance services comprising of life insurance and general insurance. It also gives investment opportunities where members can invest and earn dividends based on profitability. Call 0205134900 for inquiries. Defense Sako, Ngao Halisi. Welcome back and moving on. The Cabinet Secretary for Defence, Honorable Soipantuya, this week hosted senior officers from the Office of the Secretary to the Cabinet, headed by Deputy Chief of Staff for Performance and Delivery Management, Honorable Elid Owalo, for the vetting and validation of the Ministry of Defence performance contract for the financial year 2024-2025. During the session, the Ministry highlighted its key achievement over the past two years emphasizing its role of defending and protecting the people of the Republic of Kenya and their property against external aggression, maintaining peace across the country, engaging in civil military cooperation and conducting humanitarian civic actions. The ministry, collaboration with other ministries, departments and agencies was recognized as a significant contributor to the nation's socio-economic development. Take a look. The team was also briefed on the ministry's upcoming programs and projects for the current fiscal year, which align with the constitutional mandate, the fourth medium-term plan, and the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. In her remarks, Honorable Tuya reaffirmed the ministry's commitment to fulfilling its national duties while supporting semi-autonomous government agencies under its purview ensuring they reach their full potential. Honorable Owalo commended the ministry's dedication, patriotism and consistency, noting that these qualities have been central to its continued success. The Defence Forces Memorial Hospital marked Cancer Awareness Month, an event observed globally to raise awareness about cancer. This year's theme, No One Should Face Cancer Alone, emphasizes the importance of self-examination, early detection, timely diagnosis, preventive measures, comprehensive treatment, and ongoing support for cancer patients and survivors. Defense Forces Memorial Hospital Chief Oncologist Colonel Samuel Mwangi stressed the critical role of early screening, stating that it can lead to higher cure rates and longer survival for cancer patients. In an interview, Colonel Mwangi highlighted the efforts of the oncology department in providing care to service personnel, their families, 
and members of the Ulinzi Prime Health Services. Since operationalization of the oncology unit, we have in 2017, we have seen a total of 200, uh, 451 cancer patients with different outcomes. The oncology department currently cares for 63 patients undergoing active chemotherapy, radiotherapy, hormone and targeted therapy. Patients range in age from infants to seniors. The department manages a variety of cancer diagnoses with breast cancer, lymphomas, colorectal cancer, cervical cancer and sarcomas being the most common types. We shall take a short break. We will be back in a moment. Every day, we rely on technology to stay connected, work efficiently, and access critical information. But as our digital world grows, so does the risks. October is the Cybersecurity Awareness Month aimed at promoting cybersecurity awareness to organizations and individuals in taking proactive steps against cyber threats. The Kenya Defence Forces Cyber Command is mandated with protecting Kenya Defence Forces ICT infrastructure by anticipating and defending against cyber threats. Your vigilance is the first line of defence. Stay aware, stay secure, protect yourself in the digital world. Karada, Zingatia, Usalama Mtandaoni. Visit our social media handles and website for more tips on how you can stay safe online. In other news, Kenya Air Force aviation capabilities have been enhanced by the recent graduation of two officers, Major Clifford Mutiria and Captain Sharon Gaiwo, as qualified flying instructors from the Royal Air Force, completing a rigorous nine-month program at number five flying training school, Royal Air Force Cranwell. The specialized course running for a nine-month period was conducted by the Central Flying School in collaboration with 57 squadron of the Royal Air Force. The training was not only about refining their flying skills, but also about mastering the art of teaching those skills to the new pilots. Major Mutiria and Captain Gayo shared their experience at the Royal Air Force alluding to the school's excellence in pilot training. The expertise will be of high importance within the Kenya Air Force as well as international collaborations in strengthening aviation expertise. So well done. I have control. Well done. Andy. And that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. We look forward to your feedback via our official social media handles. End of viewership next Friday for the KDA Friday Bulletin. I am Sergeant Kasim Ali. Goodbye and be blessed.